Central Bank of Nigeria warned banks, POS operators, to desist from disrupting circulation of cash or face sanctions. Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission says commission generates 56 billion naira in 2023. Federal Inland Revenue Service begins digital capturing of market traders to widen value-added tax collection. Plus, oil clamps has Red Sea tension persist, but Angola's OPEC exit caps gains. The program is Business Express, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. I'm Musa Abubakar, your guide. It's good to have you join us. Well, let's begin by telling you that the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN has warned banks and point of sale POS operators to desist from disrupting circulation of the Naira or face sanctions. Statement by the Acting Director, Corporate Communication of the Bank, Sidi Ali Hakama, says that the attention of the Central Bank of Nigeria CBN has been drawn to alleged cases of collusion between some deposit money banks and point-of-sale operators affecting the availability of cash. It further said that the CBN frowns at such inappropriate actions by certain individuals and is investigating the reported cases capable of undermining the smooth running of the economy. Meanwhile, members of the public are encouraged to use alternative payments channels as well as report any case of unauthorized activities such as capping and hoarding by banks or POS agents to the CBN branch in their locations. The Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission says it generated 56 billion naira as internally generated revenue in 2023. The Executive Vice Chairman of FCPC, uh, Baba Tunde Rukera, stated this at a media engagement theme, reflections on the road so far and road ahead in Abuja. Olanka Ojo reports that the FCPC boss also noted that 90% of the IGR was raised from penalties and that 22.4 billion naira was remitted to the federal government. What this demonstrates is the real possibility of our country. Our possibilities are absolutely limitless. We believe that the market should be unlocked. We believe businesses should be allowed to operate well. We believe they should thrive. But we also believe in consequence. We believe that businesses must be held accountable. If you don't hold people accountable, you cannot promote good behavior. The engagement was also used to strengthen partnerships with media organizations. Data from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that the labor force participation rate among the work age population remained high at 80.4% in 22nd quarter 2023. The employment to population ratio was 77.1% in second quarter 2023. The combined rate of unemployment and time related underemployment as a share of the labor force population was 15.5% in second quarter 2023. Most workers were in self-employment in second quarter 2023. The proportion of the of workers in wage employment in second quarter 2023 was 12 percent. 
The unemployment rate in second quarter 2023 was 4.2%. This is an increase of 0.1% from the figure recorded in first quarter 2023. The rate of unemployment among persons with post-secondary education was 8% in second quarter 2023. The unemployment rate among youth um, aged uh, 15 to 12, 24 years in second quarter 2023 23 was 7.2 percent having been at 6.9 percent in first quarter 2023 the unemployment rate in urban areas was 5.9 percent in second quarter 2023 an increase from 5.4 percent in first quarter 2023 time related underemployment in second quarter 2023 was 11.8%. 8% of the working age population were in subsistence agriculture. Informal employment uh, rates in second quarter 2023 was 92.7% percentage of youth not in employment. Education no training was 13.8%. And now to our discussion. Recently, uh, President Bola Amitunabu presented a budget of 27.5 uh, trillion naira for the 2024 fiscal year to the National Assembly. While presenting details of the budget, he said the 2024 appropriation was designed to uh, address economic growth, human capital development, poverty reduction, and insecurity, stating that the 2024 budget will address issues in the education sector, such as establishment of a sustainable model of funding tertiary education and implementation of student loan uh, scheme schedule to become operational by January 2024, among other issues. The lawmakers are uh, deliberating and getting citizens' uh, contribution to enable passage or uh, before the 1st of uh, January 2024 to discuss the budget process, implementation, and possible impact on how uh, it's, uh, I mean, on the people, it's procurement and purchasing expert Abdul Mamman. Uh, Abdul Mamman. He is a follow, I mean, fellow and North Central Coordinator of the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply of Nigeria. You're welcome to Business Express. Thank you very much. Mr. I hope Sir. I got the name right. Abdul Mamban. Abdul Mamban, that's correct. Okay. <laughs> Let's delve into it then. Well, the, the, the proposed uh, national budget is being deliberated upon across the uh, uh, country. What are the expectations before 1st January? Thank you very much. First and foremost, I must use this opportunity to appreciate and thank Nigeria and wish every one of us Merry Christmas in advance. It is important that uh, this is the first budget year being prepared and forwarded by the government of uh, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and a whopping sum of 27.2 billion had been proposed. And they are broken down into sectoral parts to enable government appreciate and understand the various areas of intervention through government presence in the country. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, budget is an estimate, is inten intention of what the government in had set to do within a particular financial year and uh, every sectoral aspect of it is dependent on how government had seen the needed priorities that they need to put in place for it to work. Budget is a cause of for success in terms of a business within a country setup. Government is equally uh, aware of the MTEF program, MTEM report they've sent to the National Assembly, that's medium term expenditure framework where areas of revenues and what they are targeting will come from in order to ensure that budget is effectively implemented and more so uh, deficit is reduced to the barest minimum. In doing this, it is most important for us to understand also that budget on its own cannot begin to stand and start working, but it is the people that make it work. And uh, financial experts are playing their role, and the members of the National Assembly on the other are making consideration on sectoral allocation. That's why you have seen the presence of mi uh, mi uh, officials of uh, the ministry, the department and agencies of government to defend the budget. In defending the budget, you will have to take every sector bit by bit from all sub recognitions for explanation and proper admissibility in terms of how far 
it can reach to provide solution to intent purpose where government intervention means a better life for the citizenry of the country. Now, talking about supply, uh, 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 what uh, the needed thing for intent purpose, 80% uh, of budget implementation is said to be centered on procurement. How true and why? It is quite important for us to know that procurement is about spend management. And in that spend management, 80%, first is, 80% of budget is expended through procurement of either goods, work services, or non-consulting services because Nigeria being a signatory to the Anti-Corruption Convention of the UN was under obligation in 2007, it domesticated a, a, an universally accepted practice, which is the Public Procurement Act eventually we have in the country. And what does that mean? It is for us to be part of Committee of Nations that have come to life a realistic posture in terms of identifying with the way and manner money is spent, public fund is spent, because public office is meant for public good, and the money must be spent for public good as well. By so doing, you have to ensure that for you to utilize your budget, it has to be based on effective planning system. That plan has to be able to address where the policies of government as regard budget we go through. Government being the largest spender is also the largest employer. So 80% of the budget is usually spent because aside salaries, for example, if we take NTF, the remainder of the money that's allocated or internally generated revenue is utilized into procurement of federal goods, works, and services. That's why procurement is the key at the eye and the mouth of an organization. It can make or mar an organization depending on the priorities you have attached to it and how well people who are working on it are trained to ensure that every necessary indices that we point to a successful implementation of budget is assured. Now, full implementation of budgets is usually a challenge. Approvals are often made without cash backing. Uh, which way to go on this? Yeah, I think of recent. The current administration of President Bolame Tinubu had actually propelled a new device, which means a new means of payment, because we discover over time that budgets are made to ensure that procurement activities are, are paid for as at when due. What do I mean by that? The moment a certificate is submitted, if it has to do with construction or even delivery of an item is done or completion of a consultant service assignment, it is incumbent on the procuring entity to ensure that promptly payment is made. That's why under the fundamental principles of public procurement, it stated that Every procurement shall be planned, and every planned procurement shall be integrated into the budget, backed by appropriation. Exception to this rule is emergency procurement, which is restrictively defined, and you are not allowed to proceed to award contract until money is made available or fund is made available to meet your obligations. What does this mean? Government is trying to look away from the old a, 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 a norm where people had taken it as a, you can acquire debts on behalf of government. This time around, what the reform in procurement has brought to fore is that you must plan your procurement and budget must be made available, then you can, keep, you can go ahead. It doesn't mean that you cannot carry out your procurement till the point of award. When it gets to the point of award, you wait. Once the fund is available, then you award the contract because in the Public Procurement Act, it stated that what is accepted is that you, a, a particular contractor consultant or service provider that has completed a particular assignment or supplies or work, you can only within 60 days, you are required to settle their bill once it is submitted. And anything outside that attracts what is called interest on delayed payment because the cost of fund is very, very key to ensure that private sector organizations are taking in as part owners of what you are doing. Let them have the belief to ensure that the government has value and the citizens are giving the dividends of democracy. So what about if there's no cash backing? What happened? If there is no cash backing, then there will be mounting debts that is awaiting government to, 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 to settle. But one important thing is this. One, it is important for us to copy from our next neighbor, Ghana. Ghana has a particular relationship that has endeared for long where the procurement department and the budget office works hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And it is their duty to ensure that the main item in the budget are procurement activities. That's why when you implement the procurement plan in relevance to the procurement you intend to do within a particular set of procuring entity, you are also implementing the budget. And where there is a, di a division or divestment in terms of people not working hand in hand, to deliver service, automatically it will create problem. But it is important for government to ensure that 
with what was submitted through the MTEF, they make sure that a resounding effort is made by all concerned to ensure revenue. Like you rightly mentioned in, in your introductory set that you, you read out to the populace to hear a moment ago, that government is trying to expand her tax net to ensure that more revenue comes for government post spending. Because when revenue comes into government post, then there are a lot of opportunities that government will be able to deploy such funding in terms of meeting what they needed to give to Nigerians as citizens based on dividends of democracy. And in understanding that, you must make sure that everything is planned, effectively identified, approval needs to be given. But government has also introduced what is called the bottom top approach in terms of payment for but, but, but what, what is the what is the international practice you the, talked about Ghana and yes. where does technology play in this whole yeah. aspect yes even in procurement itself e procurement is one area that Nigeria is intending to just migrate into to ensure that there is less interaction with the human aspect everything is done in terms of effectively carrying out the activities on step-by-step -step creation and finally it is passed approval is given at any point in time you can trace whoever is responsible for a particular approval if he or she does that or do not that's what the procurement present and make sure that the transparent aspect of it is of value to whoever is providing the service and also procuring entities to be able to see that what they had actually worked towards to ensure that is procured are readily procured and government has value for it. And uh, as a result of this, where there are delays, then you need to look at the people that are involved in terms of payment and e-payment is equally good because the entire activities of government has to do with transparency and accountability. People must be held responsible for their action and inaction. By so doing, you ensure that once the proper aspect of e-procurement activities, when it comes to payment, then it should just go straight to whoever is responsible, especially the finance department, to come up with the idea of analyzing and seeing, going through the documentation to ascertain that with the ap uh, approval that is gotten through the agreement that is already made, then that particular payment request is approved. And once it is paid, contractors are always after uh, their money it, by the time they complete their assignment. Because if you want them to be part and parcel and seek to be part, part owner of what you are doing or in your organization to offer effective service to you, once they appear on time, you will sure that you will get the best out of them. Because information is readily available within their reach that they can make available equally to the people. How, how do we ensure uh, a much more uh, a transparent and responsive system whereby uh, issues of corruption have been minimized and things like that. Thank you very much. One of such flanks uh, this one. Uh, as at Saturday, this just the last week, Saturday, that went by, United Nations Convention Against Corruption met after 20 years to deliberate on way forward and how the incidences of uh, risk, that is corruption, indices in procurement can be reduced. They actually come up with a resounding report because there are about uh, 60 countries that were represented in, uh, in Texas, in Atlanta, and uh, again there are about 100 civil society organizations that played a role in ensuring that transparency and integrity in procurement is the watchword because other countries of the Western economies have been able to achieve what they achieved today as a result of the implementation of their procurement activities with regards to due and acceptable norms, which has to do with the procedures and processes. And in Nigeria, we have domesticated the law. And this particular law we call the Public Procurement Act 2007 is there with every necessary support that once it is done, carried out in a manner that ought to be by people who are trained, certified by respective institution, especially as of today, I'm a member of the Chartered Institute of Purchasing and Supply Management of Nigeria. That's a fellow. That particular institute was recommended through the country procurement assessment report that it should train and certify procurement professionals because people that are saddled with responsibility of spending money, huge sums of money, on behalf of government must have the understanding in terms of knowledge base and capacity and capability to offer that. But what we have today, People which have big knowledge are carrying out procurement, a good number of them. And as a result of that, if you are not productive, you will be destructive. And the only way we can reduce incidences of corruption is to ensure that what ought to be done in time, in, is in tandem with international best practice. The Nigerian law 
is crafted after the World Bank guidelines, why the European Union is crafted under the European directives. That of the World Bank is wider in scope than that of European Union. So as a result of so which that... Which one are we embracing? We are embracing the World Bank guidelines because the World Bank had been able to... And how effective has it been? That one is quite effective. It's okay. only that the practitioners, yes, those okay. who are implementing the law has some, some level of gaps that they need to, 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 to bridge. When okay. you bridge it in terms of knowledge requirement, that is when you'll be able to offer the service effectively and efficiently. Okay, yeah, uh, yes. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> Abdul Mama, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure too. And now to energy, oil prices rose in early trade on Friday as tensions persisted in the Middle East following Houthi attacks on ships in the Red Sea. Although Angola's decision to leave OPEC raised questions over the group's effectiveness in supporting uh, prices. Brent crude uh, futures were up 23 cents to $79.62 a barrel, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures were up 22, 22 cents at $74.11 a barrel. And now to commodities go near three-week peak on Federal Reserve rate cut bets. A U.S. inflation test looms. Let's now see how commodities are trading around the world. Now, the head of civil service of the Federation, Fulashadi Emiesa, has reiterated that ministries, extra ministerial departments and agencies have been allowed to ensure adequate budgetary allocation in the 2024 budget to fast track the digitalization drive in 2024. Haman Jabani reports that the head of service stated this at a retreat on digitalization for the head of service and permanent secretaries. It's important for us to drive these two agendas so that we can all have the type of civil service we've been dreaming about and also the politicians will know that we can actually achieve results from the eight-point agenda. Now let's see how the currencies are trading around the world. That's it. This is where we end this edition of Business Express for the week. We value your feedback, so keep the comments, observations, and suggestions coming. Be informed that all previous episodes are available on YouTube or the NTS channel. Business Express returns Monday at 3 p.m. I'm Musa Bakar. Enjoy your weekend.